Hi, my name is William Chen. I am a Calendar Research Chair in Ocean Sustainability and Global Change and an Associate Professor at the Changing Ocean Research Unit at the University of British Columbia. Today, I'm going to present a study that is in collaboration and supported by the International Institute for Environment and Environment, IIED. The study is about the future for fisheries on the high seas under the changing climate. Before going to the presentations, I want to acknowledge my co-authors of this study, Vicky Lam and Colette Webness, um, who are part of the research team uh, at the University of British Columbia for this study. The global oceans can be divided into the high seas, or area beyond national jurisdiction, and the exclusive economic zone. If you look at the global fisheries, the majority of the fisheries catches are from the EEZ. For those parts of catch that are from the high seas, only a tiny proportion of fish stocks only occurred in the high seas. Majority of those are actually what we call the straddling fish stocks, meaning that they occurred both in the high seas and in the EEZ, such as tuners and billfish. This means that the status and health of fish stocks in the high seas would also affect those that are in the EEZ as well. If there are more fish in the high seas, it is likely that um, th there will be spillover effects that would benefit to those in the EEZ as well, and vice versa. In this study, we want to know and understand what the future of the high seas fish stocks and fisheries is like in the 21st century under the changing climate. We also want to know how changes in the high sea fish stocks and fisheries will affect those in the exclusive economic zone. In developing these futures of high seas, we account for three main factors. The first factor that we look at is the changes in the society in the future. We know that it is almost impossible to predict future societal changes. So we organize a workshop to bring in stakeholders and experts who are really knowledgeable about uh, high sea fish and fisheries. We then um, solicit knowledge and information from these groups of people to develop three storylines uh, of future changes in society and how this would affect fisheries in the high seas um, through changes in fish price, fishing costs such as fuel costs, as well as things like the amount of subsidies that the countries would provide uh, to support high sea fisheries. The second factor that we look at is alternative futures with different level of climate change. We look at the business as usual high emission scenarios as indicated by the red line as well as a strong mitigation low emission scenario indicated by the black line here. In each of these alternative climate change futures, the oceans will have different level of warming, ocean acidification, ocean deoxygenation and other changes in ocean conditions that will affect fish stocks and fisheries in the future. We also look at alternative options of marine protected areas for the high seas. We know that marine protected areas are important conservation measures. And so we have three different alternative options. Hypothetical options um, include uh, no protected area, 30% of the area in the high seas to be protected, and 50% of the area in the high seas to be protected. These scenarios are indicated by the color area on the map. And these are the locations of this protected area are hypothetically placed adjacent to the exclusive economic zones. We then use a computer simulation modeling approach to combine all these drivers together to make quantitative projections on the future of high seas and fish stocks and fisheries and how that would also affects uh, the fish and fisheries in the exclusive economic zones. 
The analysis generates a lot of information and data, but here I want to highlight four key findings. First of all, we show that we find that on average, high sea fisheries are actually not economically viable across all three ocean futures. Secondly, we find that fishing effort is really important for the future biodiversity, catches, and economic benefits in both the high seas as well as EEZ, no matter which ocean futures we consider. It means that managing fishing effort in the high seas is a really important and uh, way to determine the status of fish and fisheries um, of uh, high sea fisheries um, in the future. The third finding is that climate change will play a increasingly important role, um, particularly towards the end of the 21st century. And lastly, uh, what we find is that uh, the changes in the, uh, the uh, path rate of development of fisheries in the high seas would have strong effects on those in the EEZ. For example, under the sustainable scenario in the high sea fisheries, uh, low-income countries EEZ would have seven times more maximum catch potential than those um, of the business as usual, what we call the regional wifery scenarios of high sea fisheries. To put these key findings into context, let's look at uh, a case study of West Africa. Currently, most of the countries in the West African region is, are considered to be low-income countries. They are strongly dependent on fish not only for their incomes, livelihood, but also for their nutritional health, such as their, uh, because of their strong dependence on the fish as a source of micronutrients. However, they are also strongly affected by climate change because climate change is going to have substantial impacts on their potential fisheries catch in their exclusive economic zones. Many of the countries are projected to have a more than 50% decrease in catch potential by mid-centuries under the high emission scenario. Currently, their participation in the high sea fisheries is no, but the fish stocks that are um, uh, from the high seas uh, coming into their EZ can benefit um, their fisheries. For this set of countries, a good management of the high sea fisheries really have a big effects, uh, positive effects. Uh, and benefits are on the EEZ uh, fishery resources. It also means that uh, we, even with uh, a uh, climate change, uh, if we can manage uh, the fisheries in the uh, in the high seas well, it can help compensate some of the impacts of climate change on the fishery resources within the EEZ. So um, it can uh, then reduce their vulnerability and risk of their fisheries to climate change. So before I finish this presentation, I want to reiterate two take-home message. Our study shows that um, for the straddling fish stocks, their status and futures in the high seas would have strong influence on those in the EEZ as well. And secondly, uh, climate change effects is going to affect fish and fisheries both in the high seas and the EEZ and that uh, better management of the high sea fisheries can actually benefit to those uh, countries that are uh, strongly impacted by climate change in the future within the EEZ. Thank you very much.